Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. Now today I'm gonna give 10 recommendations for alternatives, both affordable, uh, some kind of medium range and verging on luxury for alternatives to the Daniel Wellington, these minimalist Bauhaus inspired or, or should I say Bauhaus ripped off uh, fashion watches. Now guys, if you missed my video on fashion watches, I talked about the good, the bad and the ugly. I tried to um, look at the negative and the positives aspect of it. If you missed that video, which I think went viral, it's almost 200,000 views, it was a couple of months ago, have a look back, I'll add a link in the description. Uh, so if you wanna get my thoughts on fashion watches, have a look at that. Anyway, today I wanted to give my alternatives uh, because a lot of you have been requesting it, you want something similar with, with that aesthetic, but you want something with horological merit to it. Now, of course, before I get into this, I've got to do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my data bank, it's Friday. I wanted something a little bit wild card. It just makes me smile, you know? It's $69 with the most incredible bracelet ever. Um, fun, different, uh, nostalgic of my youth. Uh, so can you blame me? Anyway guys, uh, wristwatch check done, let's roll the intro and get into today's video. Now the first is a fairly obvious choice, but it is of course a Timex, and it's the Timex Fairfield. Very clean, simple, unpretentious, uncluttered, and timeless design. Only $69. You guys know I'm a massive fan of Timex. I own a 60s mechanical manual wind uh, made in Great Britain Timex. This, unfortunately, they, they don't make uh, mechanical timepieces anymore, but they still make a great variety of very tastefully done uh, quartz watches. Now this does have Indiglo, you can get it in a variety of different dial colours, white, black, I think there's a, a rose gold capped case as well. It's in a 41mm size, so it's going to be very, very pleasing to a lot of wrists out there. Uh, Timex is a brand I have a profound respect for. If, you, if you've seen the review of my mechanical, um, this, this I actually got, I think it was about 40 bucks on eBay. But Timex are an American company founded in uh, Connecticut. I gotta say for 69 bucks, you really can't beat it and certainly cheaper than the Daniel Wellingtons. Unlike Daniel Wellington, Timex is a heritage brand. They got a huge history of innovation in watchmaking. So definitely top of the list as their affordable, fantastic. Okay, so my second option is the Junkers Bauhaus. Now this particular version is a Swiss Ronda Quartz inside. These retail for about 250, a little bit more than a Daniel Wellington, but very tastefully done, incredibly similar to the Max Bill, which we'll get onto later, as you would expect. We can't discuss Bauhaus minimalist watches without bringing up the, the, the absolute icon, but we'll get to that in a, in a second. Um, so this is a German made, I love their aviation watches, and I have reviewed, actually I have reviewed this particular one, I reviewed the mechanical version, which costs a little bit more. Definitely worth the impeccable quality, gorgeous. Guys, if you're, if you're a fan of aviation like me, you will automatically love Junkers. So it's great to have that, uh, that logo on the dial. 40 millimeters in diameter, again, so a real crowd pleaser. Beautiful domed Hess like there. And I, I just love that dial, the, the layout, it's, it's fantastic. We also got the date there uh, as well, which is something we don't have on the previous Timex. Okay, so third on our list is another German brand, slightly higher end this time, very, very prestigious history, going back, I think, to uh, since about 1927, do correct me if I'm wrong. This is the Anthea, and the Anthea Classic. I did review an ancestor of this timepiece, and this is, of course, Stover. Now, Stover 
are from the Black Forest in Germany, incredible quality. In fact, actually, we were just talking about them the other day with my good friend GCR. He's considering their Flieger, which is probably their most, well, actually, definitely their most famous watch. A lot of their classic timepieces, especially something like this that dates all the way back to the heyday of Bauhaus in, in the 1930s, tends to get overlooked. Beautifully made timepieces. And what I love, and as I said in that video uh, with my good friend, Stover are really embracing the future. Their online boutique is second to none. You can specify and customize the watch. You can choose between a manual wind or a Swiss ETA automatic. You can have it display back or not. You can have uh, the movements are decorated. You know, you've got everything from Geneva stripes, blued screws, pelage work. You can even specify if you want custom engraving on the buckle, uh, what kind of um, strap you want. I just love that kind of personalization. They're embracing the future. Now, of course, these are a little bit more expensive. You can get them different dial combinations. You can have the sub seconds at six if you want. Blued hands with the white dial. You can have a choice of, I think there's a 39 millimeter, there's a 40 millimeter, and of course the smaller 36. Beautiful. And the numerals, oh, just stunning. Classic, classic Bauhaus. And I'll be sure to include some images of their original 1930s uh, ones. They're to die for. And if you can find them, have a look for them on the, on this, on the um, used market. Okay, moving on to something a little bit more affordable. Oh, and, and I should mention Stover prices. It does vary depending on the amount of customization and which model you go for, but you know, we're, we're under the thousand dollar mark, around that price range, but definitely, definitely worth it. Okay, moving on to something a little bit more affordable, at around about the 70 bucks is of course Swatch, and my pick of the bunch is the Mono. Now, Swatch pretty much invented the fashion watch. They were making fashion watches, although this is Swiss made, do bear in mind. They have an incredible history to them because they're still innovating to this day. Look at this, the System 51, just phenomenal. The Swatch, it's an amalgamation of the word second and watch. A lot of people think it means Swiss watch, but actually it's second watch. It, the whole ideology was a disposable, affordable fashion watch. They were found in 1983. They were coming out of the, the quartz crisis of the 70s. Their answer to this, the, the, the quartz crisis. And the result is highly collectible, fun, lively timepieces that can be as minimalist as the Mono, which is my pick of the bunch. This is a 42 millimeter uh, water resistance of 30 meters. It does have day and date, named after its high contrast minimalist design. Beautiful, I mean stunning. A little bit too big for me. If you if you want a smaller size, they have the 34 millimeter, more classic. Um, but there's just so many to choose on. Have a look at Amazon. What I love is that you could just start a collection. I, I have a small collection myself. Great way of owning a Swiss made timepiece that has relevance and just the sheer amount of variety, all different colors. You, can, you could go as crazy as you want. So really, really cool. Okay, moving on, something probably the most high end of, of the watches we're looking at today, and it is of course the Nomos Orion. Now I have reviewed this watch before, have a look back in my full review. Fantastic, relatively new German brand. I think they were founded just after the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Now, now this brand basically took the Bauhaus minimalist aesthetic and applied it to all their watches. They really ran with it, very tastefully done. Now you can get this in a variety of different dial combinations with, you know, Either you can get the date version or the sub seconds version. I think I, I reviewed the date if I'm if I remember correctly. Beautifully made. Now this is slightly more higher end, starting at around about the two thousand dollar mark. You can get a variety of sizes, but the real reason why I had to put them in the list is because inside we have what they call the alpha caliber movement which is their own in-house made manual wine movement beautifully decorated we have geneva stripes there blued screws pelage work comes in this very typically germanic three quarter plate uh, setup it's just gorgeous now this brand as as the enthusiasts will, will all attest to has become a darling favorite of a lot of enthusiasts. It just ticks a lot of boxes and the quality, as you would imagine, is there. Um, yes, it is more expensive, but it's something you can absolutely be proud of. I mean, you could be proud of all these watches, but I think this 
offers incredible value for its money considering you get an in-house movement, considering you get something so beautifully decorated of that high quality from a brand of the of Glashute that is just so renowned, the epicenter of German watchmaking. It really is a very strong value proposition. So anyway, check out my review, thin and elegant, absolute pure class. Anyway, let's move on. So something a bit more affordable, now looking at the Swiss again, we have of course Tissot, but not just one Tissot, we have two Tissot here. And this is of course the every time, incredibly minimalist, just a three-hander again. Now there's a whole variety of dials. This particular one is the 42 and I've also selected, where is it? Uh, I think the, the 38, the 38 comes actually on a NATO strap and is very, very nice, but we'll get to that in a moment. Tissot, as I'm sure you're all aware, is a brand with an incredibly long history. They were founded in 1853. They're a personal favorite brand, Swiss, of course. They are the gateway to the Swiss uh, watch world, in my opinion. Uh, they produce everything from the high-end stuff to, to entry level. We've got the Swiss ETA 902 in there, sapphire glass. I mean, for a smidgen over 200, no, sorry, not 200 over 100, I think it's about 120, 130 bucks on Amazon. Incredible value for money. I mean, really can't be beat. Much cheaper than a Dalian Wellington and it's a Swiss made ETA with, with sapphire glass from a brand that was founded in 1853 that is still incredibly important to this day. Their history of innovation in, in the watch industry just you know, from their, from their collaborations with Amiga and Le Mans in the 1930s. I mean, it's just wonderful. Also, they have a long list of firsts to their, to their record, to their, to their list of achievements. I mean, you, Tissot are so underappreciated in terms, horologically speaking. I just love them. The first Swiss brand for, for or Swiss watch for a lot of people. So my next choice basically is the same only in 38 millimeters. Again, we have Sapphire, we've got the Swiss ETA 902, but in a 38 millimeter case. Stunning, and with that classic Bauhaus layout to the dial, 30 meters water resistant, and this time it comes on a NATO strap. So you can see why I'm, you know, I, I highly recommend it. Like all of these watches, guys, these are good for men and women. Okay, so the next choice is a personal favorite. Actually, not a personal favorite of mine. It's a personal favorite of my wife um, because she actually owns it. And I have reviewed this watch. This is the Hamilton Intramatic, a beautiful two-hander with a date at six, very mid-century, very mad men. Inside we have the ETA 2892, an automatic. You can either have the matte black dial like my wife or a beautiful sunburst silver dial. Just stunning, sapphire glass of course, and it has a display back. Incredible value for money. I think these go for about just a smidgen under five, four to 500, although you could pick one up used for significantly less. You guys know of my admiration of Hamilton, an iconic American brand, now part of the Swatch Group, but don't forget they were an American brand for longer that, than they have been a Swiss brand. Um, this is, of course, Swiss made, talking of Swiss. 40 millimeters, lovely and thin. Some people don't like the fact it doesn't have a seconds hand, but it, this is a throwback to that mid-century. They even have the old school 60s Hamilton logo. Uh, just to give it that retro feel. Very endearing watch. I absolutely adore it. My wife loves it. I mean, this watch really is the embodiment of everything that we're talking about today. You know, minimalist with a beautiful symmetry. It's all about less is more. Um, and it really gives a sense of sophistication. The quality is impeccable. Now, you guys know I'm a big fan of Hamilton. They've been in over 400 movies, I think, uh, hugely iconic. This is actually a reissue of some of their more classic mid-century stuff, but I mean, it is gorgeous. I mean, you can't deny it. Okay, moving on to, uh, well, probably the most obvious choice. And uh, it's a watch that 
has probably inspired the whole recent trend. It, it's the iconic ultimate Bauhaus watch. It is of course the Young Hands Max Bill, uh, named after the designer of the watch. Now this was a collaboration between Young Hands, which is Germany's largest watch and clock maker. They're based in Baden-Württemberg and they teamed up, I think it was in the 60s, with the hugely important and influential Swiss artist Max Bill. Now Max Bill, he studied at the Bauhaus school and there has been a lot of discussion on you know the difference and we've got to distinguish this difference here. We have to you know address this issue because there's there's Bauhaus inspired and then there's true Bauhaus. And Max Bill is true Bauhaus because it's made in accordance to the theories, the mathematical theories, because Max Bill was went into lecturing, also taught the, uh, the Bauhaus theory. And this goes into its design, its, its proportions and how everything relates to its each other, the scale of it. It is the epitome of Bauhaus design. It's not just something that's minimalist and you know, there's a lot of theory and ideology behind it. And, and Max Bill, you know, you can, you, can, you can still read all his writings on the subject. So he was a graduate of the, the famous iconic German school, Bauhaus school. And he designed this watch in collaboration with Young Hands. He actually did a whole load of clocks and all the rest of it. But it's, it's become the definitive, the ultimate Bauhaus watch. You can get the quartz one. I think the quartz one is about just under 500, about $450. If you go with a, an ETA based, they're a little bit more an automatic. They're just gorgeous. The dial layout has been imitated to such an extent that it's almost a victim of its own success. A lot of brands have ripped off this design. There's no doubt about it. Actually, even the numerals, if you look at the, the number four, it's the Max Bill number four. It's a little calling card almost to leave his uh, mark of authenticity to the design. I believe they're different sizes. There's black dial, you can get, my favorite is the anthracite dial. I reviewed the anthracite dial. Shout out to my good friend Art. And actually he bought the Stover, the uh, Bauhaus Stover uh, that I also reviewed. It doesn't get more sophisticated, in my opinion. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that connoisseurs know, it's something that enthusiasts know, real horologists can appreciate and actually artists and fans of, of modern art can appreciate and design as well. Capital of Oro, class manifested in a watch, you know. We can't make a, a, a list of minimalist dress watches without, without the Bauhaus, without the Max Bill, you know, the, the, real, the, the real McCoy, the real McCoy. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Uh, I think, is this my last one? Yes, last, number 10, last, but by no means least, it is of course the Orient Bambino. Now this is the third generation of the watch. Orient is a Japanese made brand, relatively newer compared to Seiko. In fact, actually we haven't had any Seiko, it's quite surprising. I mean, I'm sure you guys could name uh, probably a hundred minimalist Seiko watches. But anyway, the Orient Bambino, the third generation. Now, each generation was slightly different. The third was very much in the Bauhaus style, the stick markers, but we got a choice of different colored dials with that stunning sunburst pattern on the actual dial itself, radiating outwards, very dazzling. I mean, quite enthralling and stunning. I mean, just stunning. These go for about $200 and you get the F6724 movement, which is Orient's in-house caliber. It's automatic, of course, with the manual wind and hacking features upgrade, which we didn't see in the first generation of the Orient Bambino. We get a mineral crystal, 30 meters uh, water resistant, the Bambino is, I think, a, a classic now. I mean, I've banged on about it for, for years, for donkey's years. Stainless steel, of course. Uh, did I mention the, the Max Bill was stainless steel? Yeah, stainless steel. It is 40 millimeters, so a little bit on the larger side. A lot of these are 40 millimeters, but then again, the Danny, I think Danny Wellingtons are big as well. I don't, I don't think they do anything under 40 millimeters. I think the Bambino, despite it, it's slowly going up in prices, even if it was $400, it still is incredible value for money. Anyway, those are my 10. Let me just see if I, I haven't missed any out. I mean, there, guys, there's hundreds and please do nominate your favorite minimalist Bauhaus inspired watches, alternatives for Danny Wellington. But you can, you can see from all my selection, they are all from brands with heritage behind them that you can be proud of, 
that are part of horological history and actually you know what i think i'm gonna wear the i'm gonna borrow my wife's hamilton tomorrow anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there thank you very very much for watching please don't forget to add your thoughts queries comments opinions all the rest of it down below please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it found it useful and as always guys i will catch you in the next one okay ciao